need to be a minimalist to feng shui your home? That's what I want to talk about today in this video. Let's get one thing straight. Feng shuiing does not mean decluttering to the point of having nothing in your house. And neither does minimalism. So how do these two ideas work together? I'm Patricia and I help women turn their homes into powerhouses for manifesting money, magic, miracles and all the good things into your life using the ancient practice of feng shui. I make brand new videos every single week so be sure to hit that red subscribe button and click the bell to get notified each time I release a brand new video. Before we get down to it, let me just say that I am not a minimalist. In fact, I may be a maximalist, <laughs> but don't let that turn you away. I really, first of all, want to acknowledge the influx of minimalist living and the decluttering phenomena that has taken over the world, especially with the growing popularity of Marie Kondo and the minimalists. They are doing incredible work because minimalism to me is living with fewer possessions in order to let go of the societal pressures to kind of keep up. And feng shui is an ancient practice that helps you make your environment get aligned with what it is that you want to call in. For me, feng shui is a practice of acupuncture for your home. So if we think about um, your home being like a person, you would not want to um, feed yourself with loads and loads and loads of junk food and terrible things because it's always going to have a negative impact on your body. So the same goes for your house. Having loads of things that are broken or not working is going to have an impact on your home energetically. Now, I am someone who has stuff, but let me just be really clear that too much stuff blocks the chi. It blocks this flow of energy flowing in. And when we talk about chi, people think it's like, it, or when, and it's really a very difficult, untangible thing. It's like, what is the chi? But the chi is money, opportunities, luck, new jobs, good things, like what's coming in, good and bad. Now, one of the big things that I've noticed are people do feel way more motivated when you clear stuff out because it's almost like giving your house a little bit of a detox. You know, if you go on a cleanse, you feel like you're full of energy. And that's exactly the same thing with your home. So here's how feng shui and minimalist living kind of come together because it's all about creating a home that has core pieces that you add door. Now, when you come into your home and you saw a picture on the wall that you actually don't like, how is that going to inspire you? How is that going to make you feel good? It's not at all. So your home should only have pieces in your home that you love, that you come in and you're like, yes, I love my office chair. I love my bed. I feel so comfortable in it. Yes, that couch makes me feel good. Now, first of all, when you're, you may be listening to this going, oh my God, I have to throw everything out. I don't like it all any of it. And that's okay. I feel like, first of all, you have to kind of go, okay, I'm aware that this stuff isn't necess doesn't necessarily spark full joy for me, but what are the things that you can let go of easily to allow them to be replaced with things that you do love? So you don't have to be a minimalist to practice feng shui, but the philosophy of it can be beneficial for you because we want to make sure that the pieces that you do have in your home make you feel good. And that is a really big part of feng shui because as the energy is coming in and around, you want to be feel good in your environment. Now, having a lot of stuff, um, it may mean just giving yourself a time to reflect, like move around your house and see the different items in your home and say, am I using it? You know, is it difficult for me to let go? Now, if it is difficult or it feels like, am I using it? And the answer is, no, I'm not using it. You're like, okay, well, I'm not using it. Um, am I ever going to use it? Mm, I don't know. Am I ever going to use it? Yes or no. If you're never going to use it or if you haven't used it, and have I used it in like six months, six months? No, I haven't. So then, and you're like, and there may be a resistance then to letting it go. 
Maybe it costs a lot of money. Maybe it's related with something to your past. And if it's difficult to let go on that level, that's something you need to definitely address. Because for me, it's important for us to have things in your home as a feng shui consultant that I love em emphasizing. It's important thing to have things in your home that are aligned to where you are going, that are practical, that are useful, and that are aligned with the type of life that you want to create. Having things that are associated with the past that are difficult to let go, maybe there's a little bit of residual like holding on to the past. And the thing is, if you keep looking backwards, you're going to fall over um, because you can't go forwards and backwards at the same time. But if we start focusing on where you want to go, that is going to make a big difference because you want to make your home a vision board for your future, for what it is that you want to call in for where you are going. So allowing yourself to take on the ideas and concepts of minimalism in terms of the practicality and what you love and allow it to then see each piece does it line up with where I'm going, with what I want to call in, with, with my sense of personal growth and development and my vision for the future. So here's how to embrace minimalism and practice feng shui. Have a few key pieces, that intentional pieces that make you feel really good. Get rid of artificial plants. So artificial plants, they basically allow the energy to come in and kind of create stagnant energy because they're not alive and they're not breathing. So you want to clear those out. Get rid of and pare down what is in excess. So like loads of books, for example. Now, you may be a big avid reader and that could be a really difficult one for you. And that's where you have to go like, am I going to read these books again? Do I love them? And if you're not going to read them again, perhaps somebody out there would just love the wisdom from that book. So start to see how you could release some of those things and pare down some of the excess. And it doesn't mean a full clear out of everything. The next place for feng shui to make sure that chi is moving and that the energy is not getting stagnant and stuck is to clean out the cupboards that haven't been touched in months. So just think about even we think of the idea of like move, uh, you have a beautiful moving little pond and then the, the, it stops moving. So the pump breaks and it stops moving. And then this pond gets all like grimy and green and gross and the energy becomes stagnant. That's the same kind of idea of what will happen in a cupboard that you haven't touched for months that has all of these like, you know, paperwork and stuff that's, that's just not being used or required. We want to clear it out. So we should ha use things in our homes as much as possible. Make sure it's being used and that will then make sure that the energy is going to, to um, circulate because stale energy blocks the flow of energy, which is not what we want in our homes. And it will really hold us back from moving and calling in what it is that we want as easily as we can. Now, as I said, I'm not saying you have to get rid of everything. An empty house could actually have really bad feng shui because when I work with people, client, clients were working with feng shui is acupuncture for the home. So it's like the invisible energy. But what we can talk about today is what's on the visible, like on the aesthetic. So I have a fun exercise for you. I want you to move around your house and look at everything and see if it resonates, number one, and then use the power feng shui number 27 to change the energy of your home. Move 27 things. This may be a little bit like what? Move 27 things, um, just one thing 27, or even just move one thing 27 times. But I think I would really love you to just move around and see if you can move it. And then as you move those items, maybe some of them need to be let go. And maybe you could dive to the place of letting go 27 items. Now, I want you to reflect on how your house feels after this exercise. Do you feel like you have more energy in your home? And do you feel good about the things in your house? As you move the 27 things, come and let me know. I would love to hear in the comments, has this resonated with you? And what are you going to take action on? Is there one piece in your house that you're like, oh man, that has to go. I know exactly the thing. Or, oh, that cupboard is the one that has stagnant chi in it that needs to be cleared. Because when we reflect about how our feels, house feels after this exercise, I want it to feel really, really great. Now, minimalism and feng shui can cohabitate in your home if that's what works for you. Now, just remember to make your home an energetic 
place that is like magnetic for what it is that you want. It is so, so potent when we have a little checklist. Now, I would love to invite you to check out my Feng Shui checklist. So this checklist gives you basically step by step everything that you can move around your house, not even move, but things that you can look at and identify in your home that could be blocking the chi and how to improve it. So you can go to patricialohan.com forward slash checklist. Um, so that is patricialohan.com forward slash checklist to get access to my ultimate Feng Shui checklist guide. This checklist walks you through step by step things that you can do to improve the flow of energy in your home and to integrate this minimalism concept that you want to call in. Now, as I said, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel and the bell if you want to be notified when a new video goes live every single week. Have a great day and I cannot wait to hear your feedback in the comments.